God all the time anyhow, but, uh, you know, just as for uh, the direction God is wanting to go with this, I did feel that uh, he wanted me to bring this to, uh, to everyone's attention. So Exodus chapter 13, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day. Everybody say, Remember this day. Remember this day in which he came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. And there in verse 4, This day came ye out in the month of Bib. Verse 4, once again, This day, everybody say this day, this day. came ye out in the month of Bib. Now I want you to drop down to verse 17 with me. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the children, had let the children go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Verse 18. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Brother Watson, once again, would you pray? Amen. You all can be seated here tonight. Praise God. I know we've got a cordless mic somewhere. It might be hit. Amen. I'm going to preach today on the focus of my desire. The focus of my desire. And, and I'm going to try and stick. I'm going to try. And stick to what I've wrote down here as the Lord gave it to me. Amen. First off, we do what we want to do. Amen. Praise God. Those that wanted to be to church here today, for the most part, are here. Amen. It's something that we have made a priority in our lives. There, I'm not saying that there isn't others. You know, I know Brother Harold... Amen. Uh, uh, he called me last night, and uh, he was wanting to come to church. Asked me if I'd come pick him up. And I said yes, but he had a treatment this morning. And so when he got home, he was very weak in his body, and he called me. He said, Brother Thomas, he said, I'm not going to be able to go. He said, I want to be there. He said, but I'm feeling weak. And so there are instances sometimes, amen, that we're unable to do the things that we desire to do. Amen. But for those that want to serve the Lord, the focus of their desire, amen, it becomes a priority in their lives, in our lives. Praise God. It's those that desire, amen, to be in His presence. I'm telling you, right now, it's that push, Brother Sean. It's that push, Sister Tasha. Amen. Each and every one of us, we come up against that very spot where they're at right now. Hallelujah. And, and we keep on pushing and we keep on praying and we keep on seeking and we keep on trusting and believing that God is going to do a work. And those, that, amen, that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. If you want to make heaven, you can make heaven. There ain't anything in this world that can keep you from reaching out. There's nothing in this world that can keep you in bondage. There's nothing in this world, amen, that can trouble you to the point that you would be lost. Amen. We have power in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And if it be your desire, if it is your focus, amen, whatever you set your heart to do, whatever you set your mind upon, amen, you can have it. We do what we want to do. 
the things that we desire. Amen? We do. Praise God. People out there in the world, amen, if they're wanting to go on vacation, it doesn't matter how much income they lack. Hallelujah. They'll begin to focus their attention. They'll begin to squander pennies. They'll do the things that they have to do. And when it comes time to go on vacation, they'll go. Amen. If they're wanting to buy a new car, they'll figure out some way to buy it. Amen. If they're wanting a new home, they'll figure out some way to get it. Amen. If they want something, hallelujah, I want you to know when they focus their desire, hallelujah, when they focus their attention, when they set their priorities, hallelujah, there ain't nothing that will stop them. Hallelujah. If you want to raise your children in the church, you can do it. Amen. But if you want to allow them to go out into the world, you can let them. Hallelujah. But it depends upon the focus of your desire. Can you say amen? Praise God. When we are determined to do something, our focus of desire drives us to obtain. Now, I know it's a long, long time ago, and I've mentioned it maybe a time or two over the years that I've been here, but I remember 1977. What? For many, that was before we were born. 1977. Amen. A man by the name of Kyle Macy. He played for the Kentucky Wildcats. And every day of his life, he would go to the basketball court and he would shoot free throws. Every day he would shoot 100 free throws. Every day. And he got, amen, his goal, his focus, his desire, amen, he would get there, and his determination was out of a hundred free throws that he would get a hundred, amen, that he would not miss any. And he would do that, and he would do that, and he would do that, amen. But Kyle Macy, when he got on the basketball court in the middle of a game, he had a 98% free throw shot, amen. 98 times out of 100, he was going to hit the free throw that he was determined to hit. Church, I want you to understand, people that do things in the secular world, if they want to do it, they can do it. Hallelujah. It all depends upon the focus of your desire. It all depends, amen, on what you are hungry and thirsting after. It all depends how bad you want it. It all depends how loud you'll scream. It all depends on how hard you will put. It all depends, amen, on the focus of your desire. God called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees. He called them out and he said, come out. Separate yourself from your family. Come out. Separate yourself from your kinsmen. Come out. Separate yourself from the people that are therein. Amen. You come out and you follow me. Hallelujah. The one thing I believe that Abram decided he was going to do. Amen. He determined that he was going to have the closest relationship he could possibly have with his God. Why, Lord, would you look at me and all of my family? Why, Lord? Hallelujah. Would you call out my name? Why, Lord? Amen. Would you draw me? Sometimes I ask that same question out of all of my family and out of all my loved ones. Hallelujah. Why did God focus his attention on me? Hallelujah. Why did he touch, touch my wife? Hallelujah. Why did he draw us together? To come and serve the Lord. I tell you what. We are a privileged people this day. Hallelujah. When God began to deal with Abram. Amen. Abram got up. Hallelujah. I can imagine him looking over at Sarai and say, Hey honey, you need to get your stuff together. God has done gave a word. And this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to take place. This is what's going to come down. Amen. And he got his things together. Praise God. He woke and he went over, I believe, and he told to uh, talk to his uh, to his family and his loved ones. Say, hey, God's gave me a call. God has gave the uh, Hallelujah an unction to me. Hallelujah. I might see you sometime later. Hallelujah. But I want you to know right now, I'm going to get up. Uh, hallelujah. And I'm going to move out uh, and I'm going to do what God has directed me to do. Uh, I'm going to follow in the way God has called me to follow. Hallelujah. I'm going to live the way God has told me to live. 
He was determined to fulfill the focus. He was determined to do what God had directed him to do. And he began to walk. The Lord spoke to him and told him, so wherever you set your foot, hallelujah, wherever you decide to go, hey amen, I want you, to, I want you, Abram, I want you to, to look up. Hallelujah. How many times uh, we've heard the scripture quoted. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, look unto the hills uh, from whence cometh your help. But I want you to understand, we know where our help comes. Uh, our help comes from the Lord. But Abram, hallelujah, God told him to look up to the stars. Hallelujah. What he is saying to you right here, get your eyes off of the world. Uh, get your eyes off of the, of the substance. Uh, get your eyes off of the, of, the, off of the carnality. Get your eyes off of the flesh. You begin to look up uh, to the stars of heaven and realize that I can do, hallelujah, what you can't do. I can move where you can't move. Hallelujah. I can prepare what you can't prepare. Hallelujah. But the one thing that you do need to do is focus on your desire. Hallelujah. You focus on me. You focus on following me. You focus on listening to me. You focus on doing my will. And I will give you the desire of your heart. Hey, I want you to understand. Praise God, if we're praying in the Spirit and we're not praying amiss, hallelujah, whatever you're seeking after, God will fulfill in your life. Hallelujah, whatever you have need of, hallelujah, you're going to have to get up. Hallelujah, you're going to have to square your shoulders. You're going to have to look to the mark. Hallelujah, you're going to have to listen for the voice. Hallelujah, and begin to step out into God's desires for your life. Jacob had a desire. He desired to have what his brother Esau didn't respect. He desired to have what his brother Esau didn't consider valuable. He desired to have what his brother Esau wasn't willing to work for. Amen. You see, it was just naturally supposed to fall into the hands of Esau because he was the firstborn. It was just naturally supposed to. Hey, but God can make the way. Hallelujah. God can change things to your benefit. Hallelujah. God can open the doors and no one can close. Amen. And God will close the door and no one can open. Hallelujah. But you've got to focus. One step at a time. Hallelujah, as, as the, the opportunity presented itself, hallelujah, which is the will of God. Hey, I want to be in the will of God because when opportunity presents itself, I want to step through. Hallelujah, it's when you miss the will of God that opportunity presents itself and you fail to step through. But if that focus, Brother Watson, if your desire, your hunger... Your thirst, amen, is for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God is going to fill you to overflowing. God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't even contain. Hallelujah. God will open the door. Hallelujah. And give you a smooth sailing. Hallelujah. I'm not saying, hallelujah, that every time you go through a door, it's going to be smooth sailing. But the one thing I do know, if you keep your attention on God, God will take you through safely. And Jacob obtained the birthright. And Jacob obtained the blessing. But he had to go through some trials. He had to go through some struggles. He had to go through some problems. Amen. He had some threats coming from his brother. Amen. But he found himself under the authority of his uncle Laban. But it was there, hey, amen, he began to focus on Rachel. Woo-wee. Man, I want you to look at that little lady coming there. Huh. And he, he got his eyes on Rachel. You are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful. To me, can't you see, you're everything I hope for, you're everything I need, you are so 
beautiful to me. Jacob, he got his eyes on Rachel, and he just thought, man, that has got to be the most beautiful woman in the world. He went to his, to his uncle. He said, hey, Uncle Abe. Not Abe. That was his grandpa. Uncle Abe. Man, your younger daughter, Rachel, in my heart just go pity pat, pity pat, pity pat, pity pat. Time I get around her. <laughs> I like to make her my wife. Well, Abe said, well, you know, we can work this out. He said, you worked for me for seven years. And she's yours. He's smiling from ear to ear. He looked like a Cheshire cat. Every day he'd get up and he'd see, he'd see Rachel standing over there. And he'd work. And the Bible said it just seemed like just a, a few days. Them seven years clicked by, hey man, and his wedding night come. Lights were dark. No candles, no lights. He stepped in to that tent. His new wife to be was there. He thought. He got up in the morning. And he seen that woman who had eyes like a basset hound. <laughs> she had them tender eyes. <laughs> he started going, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what, what have you done, Abe? Or, uh, Labe, what have you done to me here? I'm pretty sure I worked seven years for Rachel. Who is this that you've hooked me up with now? You see, when you got the desire, amen, when you really focus on what God is wanting you to do, amen, it just seemed like a few days, hallelujah, that God moved upon you and God touched you and he gave you that desire. Praise God. And when Jacob realized that he had been deceived, hey, any time you start dealing with somebody that you can't trust, Amen. Anytime you start, hey, Jacob was trying to be fair. Jacob was trying to be righteous. Jacob was trying to do what was proper. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want you to know the same way he obtained his blessing, the same way he obtained, hallelujah, uh, uh, the benefits that he received, I want you to understand, hallelujah, he found out that not everybody is going to be fair. Not everybody is going to do things right. Hallelujah. But they, that did not uh, disrupt Jacob and his plan. Uh, hallelujah. He looked over at his, at his uh, new father-in-law. I started after Rachel. I'm wanting Rachel. And they even said, well, I'll go ahead and give her to you, but you've got to work seven more years. He had to invest 14 years to receive. You see, sometimes we pray for things that we want and we desire, and we put a lot of time in. Hallelujah. But that you can never be deterred. Hallelujah. If you ever knew God revealed something to you, amen, in the light, you can't ever balk when the dark comes. Hallelujah. When the, when the lights was out and, and uh, Jacob found out that he got somebody he wasn't interested in, hey, I want you to understand he was upset, but he did not neglect what God had given him. And I thought it was an amazing thing because Leah felt like she was hated. And even when Rachel wanted some of her mandrakes, Leah said to Rachel, says, you've already got my husband. She didn't think about the fact that she was the deception. You see, sometimes people don't realize they're being the ones used to deceive. And they step into it. But the fact of the matter is, when Jacob died, they buried him with Leah. 
they didn't bury him with Rachel. Because Leah, amen, was the one that stayed by his side. That's not to say that Rachel didn't love Jacob. She did provide for him two children. But the fact of the matter is, amen, it seemed like Leah was cheated. But when Jacob died, he told his, his sons, he said, you bury me where Grandpa was buried. And you bury me where Dad was buried. And you bury me with Leah. You see, you got to focus. His focus was to win Rachel. But at the end, he was buried with Leah. So Thomas, where are you going with this? What I'm saying is, amen, when we focus our desire, God's going to fulfill it. Amen. When we focus our desire on God's plan, God's going to pick us up and he's going to give us strength and he's going to lead us, amen, where we need to go. Now, the children of Israel are all in bondage now. 400 years that went by of them being down in Egypt. Egyptian bondage in worldliness. Wrapped up under the bond bondsman. Wrapped up under the taskmaster. Unable to make decisions for themselves. Amen. But when they begin to cry out to God, God heard their cry and he sent them a deliverer. God heard their cry and he sent them a savior. God heard their cry and he gave them instruction. Amen. Along comes Moses and this big bush begins to burst out into flames. And it got the attention of Moses. And Moses, he's looking at the flame and he, he begins to step over there because he's seen that it wasn't being consumed. So he steps over to this burning bush over here and all of a sudden the voice of the Lord begins to speak out. It says, Moses, put off thy shoes or put thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Amen. And I can imagine at that moment in time, hallelujah, Moses kicked those sandals off, fell down on his knees, amen, and began to listen to what the Lord said. He said, I want you to go back. I've heard the cry of my people, and I'm sending you. Amen. And then Moses, he began to stutter. Not that he wasn't already a stutterer. Or maybe talking to the Lord, maybe he'd become a stutterer. I don't know, but the Bible says that he told the Lord, he said, how am I going to go? He said, you know, I can't even hardly talk. You know, my speech isn't what it ought to be. But the Lord took away all of his excuses. He said, go get your brother Aaron, and Aaron's going to be the spokesperson. God take, took away all of his excuses, and then he went before Pharaoh. And we know that about the, all the plagues that come, the ten plagues, and finally the death angel came through. And here's what I'm focusing on right here. Moses told the children of Israel, said, when this happens, when the death angel comes through, when you've ate the lamb and the pertinence thereof, when you've done all these things, amen, then when all this comes to pass, you're going to leave it. And when you step out, that's going to be the month that you leave a bib. I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this is the time. Amen. Church, I can tell you the day that I got baptized, Sister Bethany. Amen. I can tell you, amen, when the Spirit of God came upon me and my wife. I can tell you when the anointing of God began to take over. I can tell you when God began to minister under my heart. I can tell you, amen, praise God, because we have to keep it in our mind. Amen. God began to stir something up within my heart, and nothing else was in this world was going to be able to take the place of it. Hallelujah. Each and every one of us, we have got a void in our our lives and the only thing brother Sean the only thing sister Tasha the only thing that can feel that emptiness the only thing that can feel amen that vacancy the only thing that is able to feel that void is the power of the Holy Ghost the strength of the Almighty God the unction of his spirit hallelujah the touch of his anointing hallelujah the strength of his call hallelujah the only thing that I care about amen is to focus on what God has called me to do the only thing I can that I care about is the anointing that God has called for my life. The only thing that's going to make a difference in the hereafter is that which
which you have done for God. What is the focus of your desire? What is the thing that draws you? What is the thing, hallelujah, that stirs you? Well, Sean broke over there just a moment ago. And I felt the Holy Ghost all over him. Amen. I felt it because they were binding together. But the unction of God began to move. Hallelujah. And he felt the Holy Ghost. And I told him, I said, Sean, I said, the Holy Ghost, you're just right there. Because the Holy Ghost is hovering. You see, we're waiting on God to fill Sean. But God's waiting on Sean to give him his tongue. Once that flips over, it's going to come forth. Moses told the children of Israel, I want you to remember this month. Amen. This is the time you're going to eat for seven days of unleavened bread. Amen. This is going to be something that you're going to have to remember to do. Amen. We need to focus every year. Amen. We have an anniversary service here. Praise God. It's not because, amen, I've done anything great. It's just the fact that God has called me to a church. Amen. But I think about when God first called me here. I remember sitting down with Brother Watson. Amen. And I remember the first time I called Brother Watson. Now, he doesn't have the same answer machine message. But I called up Brother Fox and I said, Brother Fox, I was praying. And God moved upon me. And, and I said, God had showed me a vision of me kneeling at this altar. Had that light blue carpet about the color of Brother Clinton's shirt. And I was kneeling at the altar and I was the, I was the pastor. I was in a Berea church service. I went up to Brother Peter and I told him, I said, Brother Peter, I said, I said, God just showed me a vision of me kneeled down at the Corbin church and I was pastor. And Brother Peter said, Brother Thomas, I believe it. So I called Brother Fox up. I said, Brother Fox, I said, what's going on in Corbin right now? Well, they don't have a pastor. Okay, what's going on? He said, well, Ed Watson, he's in control of it. You know how that is. And I said, well, I need Brother Watson's number. I said, because God is dealing with me. And I said, I'm going to call him up and check it out. So, I got his answer. Hello. Leave your name and number after the beep. I'll get back with you soon. Still remember it. It was there for about 15 years, that same recording, until he got this new phone system. He called me back. I said, Brother Watson, I said, I'm interested in trying out for the church. He said, Brother Thomas, he said, we don't have no money. I told him, I said, I'm not interested in no money. I don't know if you remember me saying it or not. I said, I'm not interested in no money. I said, I'm interested in the will of God. You see, the focus of the desire, amen, is the only thing that matters when you've got, when you've got God's will in your life. The focus of your desire, amen, it doesn't matter, hallelujah, all the things that this world has to offer. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. If the focus of your desire is to serve the Lord, if the focus of your desire is to win souls, if the focus of your desire, amen, is to do a work for the king, hallelujah, the only thing that's going to make a difference, amen, is to do God's will. And I sat down with Brother Watson on the Wednesday or Sunday night, the last Sunday night of December '99. Sitting right there in them chairs, I told him, I said, Brother Watson, I said, I feel it would be God's will for me to pastor this church. And he said, Brother Thomas, he said, as far as I'm concerned, you're a pastor. I said, No. I said, we'll come back Wednesday night. And I said, we'll let the church vote. Brother Watson took me down and took me through all the, all the church. Gave me a tour. of all. He took me into the furnace room. He 
He showed me the water. The focus of your desire is to do the will of God. Now, God told Moses, he said, now, I'm going to bring the children of Israel out. And he said, and when I bring them out, he said, I'm not going to take them to the Philistines' land. He said, because even though that's closer, he said, because if they get ready to go through there and then they face war, they'll turn back and go to Egypt. You see, that's what happens when we begin to put somebody that's coming to the Lord and we put them in the heat of a battle too soon. We put them into something, amen, before they're able to handle it. Amen. We, we start putting obligations and stuff upon them, and you start putting them in Sunday school classes, and you start, you start you know, uh, putting them up on the platform, and you start doing this, and you start doing all that stuff with them. Amen. The Bible, there's a reason why the Bible says we're not supposed to use a novice. Amen. He said, because when they begin to get into war, when they're confronted with a situation, amen, they'll run back to Egypt. So the Bible says that, that the Lord led them through the land of the Red Sea. And he says, and he led them through their harness, meaning they were prepared for battle. You see, when we begin to do something with the Lord, we got to be prepared to fight. But the Lord led them a longer way so he could begin to train them so that they would learn to be able to rely upon him. It was there that they began to realize that God was going to feed them. It was there that they began to realize that God was going to clothe them. It was there that they realized that God was going to take care of them. Amen. He had a fire that was going on. Amen. Hallelujah. When the, when the night would get dark and when you were in the shadows and when they were in the shadows. Amen. God lights the path. He is a lamp unto our feet. He is a light unto our path. Hallelujah. God lit the fire in the middle of the night so that they, so that they had to direction to follow when God was leading them they was able to follow during the middle of the day amen the black smoke would plume hallelujah they had something to look forward to praise God they had a, a direction that they needed to follow and God began to train them hallelujah for the operation of the battle church when you come to the Lord you got to focus on when God has called you when you come to the Lord you got to focus on the, the unction of God when when God has called you you got to begin to step forward and say here am I hallelujah you got to have a spirit of volunteer Hallelujah. Whatever I got to do that I might please the Lord. Whatever I got to say that I might sing the right. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that God is requiring of me, I want to be ready to do it because God is going to prepare you. Amen. For the chores that are ahead. God is going to prepare you for the battle that is up, uh, uh, up the road. God is going to prepare you. Amen. For the persecution that's going to come your direction. It ain't just going to fall into your lap. You got to be willing to focus. God to give you the victory. And when they went up and they got at the Red Sea and the enemy was behind them, God put a shield between the enemy and you. And then he told the children of Israel when they begin to be fearful and they begin to listen to the cries of the enemy coming up behind them in the chariots and all that stuff. Amen. They begin to, to question it. Amen. Moses stood up, and I can imagine him holding his staff up. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And at that moment, the wind began to blow. You see, that's what happens when the Holy Ghost comes. The wind just begins to blow. Amen. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house wherein they were setting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues. That's what's going to happen. Amen. When the wind begins to blow because you're focusing on the desire that God has for you as a couple. You're focusing on the desire. Amen. I believe from the bottom of my heart God touched you. I believe from the bottom of my heart that there was healing virtue that flowed into you today, Sister Michelle. And I believe that the enemy, he will, 
He's going to come to you and he's going to try to tell you that it didn't happen. But I'm telling you, I felt the unction of God upon you. The Spirit of God begin to touch you. Amen. And you're going to begin to see the blessings of the Lord upon your life. Amen. Because you focused to serve him. You focus to praise. I don't care what's going on around you. I don't care what even your husband might do. Hallelujah. You focus on what God is calling you to do. Amen. And God will give you the desire of your heart. He will bring Leroy in. Amen. He'll bring you up just like he brought Sean in. Just like he brought Tasha in. Just like he brought, uh, uh, hallelujah, Sister Tasha here in. And just like uh, uh, he brought uh, Douglas in. Do you know who you are? Eric. When we focus our desire, nothing can separate us. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Sister Susan. Show to all of us. God is going to work on your behalf. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God is going to begin to move you. It's becoming something that's overwhelming to you. But the Spirit of God is going to come in and lift up a standard against it. Amen. God is going to begin to minister unto you. Amen. So you're going to begin to feel the power of God like you've not felt Him in a long time. And God is going to bring deliverance in your life. God is going to bring the power and the strength of His anointing round about you. And He's going to give you the power that is necessary to make it. Let's clap our hands to the Lord right now. Ah! Ah! Oh, he can't no matter as si lo to come ya. He a nae como si la di as si to lo lo basi. Kim po tati as si lo lo ti kamani anda. Kai ka mai a i te so bi a ina e si a ti o koi e tai o no ti as si la. Somebody to be sensitive to the Lord. God's going to give them an interpretation. Don't be afraid. Somebody obey. I'd like for us all to lift our hand right now. I feel like the Lord is, is, is uh, I feel like the Lord is dealing with somebody.
when David was in the sheepfold. He was watching after all the sheep. The desire of David's heart was to serve the Lord. He did not neglect his responsibility unto his father. He did not neglect, amen, the calling that was on his life in that realm. But David had a mind to serve the Lord. Amen. I don't think that this was something that just developed after David became king. Amen. That he had a heart that was after God's heart. Amen. But I believe that this was something that David began to develop when he was by himself. Amen. There's times when I'm driving down the road with Clinton. I know you're on the road a lot. Amen. Others that are on the road, there's times when I'm driving. Hallelujah. That God begins to deal with my heart. Amen. Brother Sean, I know you're driving back and forth to Louisville and you're having to do the thing and you're spending a lot of time. It's in those times that you can focus on the desire. Hallelujah. That God has got for you. Hallelujah. It's in those times that God began, I believe, to move upon David when he was out all alone and he was watching over the flock. Hallelujah. And he would begin to speak to the Lord. Hallelujah. And he began to develop a relationship with his God and the sheepfold out in the field. Hallelujah. At times when he was uh, all by himself, nobody else was in uh, shouting distance at all. Hallelujah. He developed uh, his relationship uh, with his God. It began to be the focus of his desire. And when Saul began to stumble, when Saul began to waver, when Saul began... Hallelujah, to be wrapped up in his own flesh. Hallelujah. God already had his mind upon who was going to be king. God already had his mind upon somebody whose heart was after his heart, who was whose desire was after his desire. Hallelujah, whose relationship it had already been developed. And he called David. And the anointing was upon David. God prepared him for the work ahead. He had to learn to fight to survive. In this world and in this society, we got to fight to survive. Amen. We got to fight, amen, to do what God's called us to do because the enemy is vying for your soul. You got to focus on your desire because if you grow slack to the things that God has called you to do, amen, it won't be long till you'll become Saul. Saul had a right spirit in the beginning, Saul had a hunger in the beginning, Saul was humble in his own eyes in the beginning, amen. But when he lost his focus, and he began to look in his carnality. That's when God rent the kingdom out of his hand. I'd like for us to stand. I'd like for us to bow our heads. I've not said this in a long time. Not spoken in a long, long time. But each of us are faced with different situations in our lives. And sometime or another, we've got to make a choice. It shouldn't be hard for us to make a choice when it comes to the things of God. Now, I'm reminded of that story of Brother Troy Craft down in Mississippi when that hurricane hit. Hurricanes are hitting this coming week. 
And that story, of course, many of y'all have heard it. I actually preached it at Sister Grace's funeral. The man had, had planted a big oak tree. It was right down where the ocean was coming in, just a small portion of Mississippi. And he planted a big oak tree. He brought it from north down south and planted it because everything was so sandy down there. And he planted it and it grew and he had a two-story house, but then the hurricane came and the floods began to rise. And he went, he and his two girls and his wife, to the upstairs floor as the flood was rising in the house. And finally, when he could go no higher, the only thing he knew to, knew to do was to climb out the window into that oak tree that had grown up above the roof. And as water was rising, as he was climbing out into the tree with his two girls, and his wife started out and she fell into the swirling water and was rushed away. And the rain beat all night long. And he was holding his two girls in his arms in the tree. And as the rain continued to beat down, his arms began to be weak. They were becoming so tired. He was so weary. And he knew that to save one, he would have to give up the other. And so without even thinking, he just opened one arm and he dropped one of his little girls into the swirling water and she washed away. And he took his arm and he wrapped it around his other girl that he had left. And the next morning, Brother Troy Craft was part of the rescue team. And as the boat come by, that man was standing up in that tree, holding on to his little girl, screaming at the top of his lungs, I had to let one of them go. I had to let one of them go. I had to let one of them go. The focus of our desire has got to be on the Lord. You cannot keep the world and hold on to God. You've got to let one go. Sister Bethany begins to say, I want to open this altar here today. And I'm saying, what is the focus of your desire? What will you do to receive eternal life? What are you willing to give up you might live. What is the focus of your desire? I'm opening this altar right now. I'm asking you to come. You got to let one go. You got to be willing to let one go.